Did you notice that the USPTO trademark checking website has completely changed recently? Well, I'm making this video to teach you how to check for trademarks on this new site and how to keep your store protected. If you start a print on demand business, this is one of the most important things that you need to learn and understand to keep your store protected. Because if you infringe on too many other people's trademarks, you can lose your entire business and all the other hard work that you put into this will be for nothing. Trademarks are meant to help protect brands from brand confusion. Like if you put the words Nike is awesome on a shirt, people would likely assume that that shirt was sold by the company Nike. But lots of other more super common words can be trademarked for clothing. And if you don't make sure to check for these for what's written on your items for sale, what's in your titles and what's in your tags, then you can get your store into a lot of trouble. Even if your shirt doesn't say the words, but you use them in your title, that can get you an infringement. So again, we'll use this video to teach you the ins and outs so you can stay protected. Now let's hop into how to use the new site, but make sure you stay until the very end because there's lots of things that you can't check trademarks for that you're still not able to sell in your store. So make sure to stay until the end so you can understand some of that nuance to again protect your shop. Now just a quick disclaimer though, I am not a lawyer, none of this is legal advice. I'm just giving you the advice that I have from watching many, many YouTube videos and actually speaking directly to a trademark lawyer to try and make sure that I'm understanding things correctly. And even if you think you know how trademarks work and what to look for, you might learn something new in this video because I definitely learned some new things after speaking to a lawyer myself. So let's hop right into it. So to get to the trademark checking website, you wanna type in TESS, the number two, dot USPTO dot gov. Now, you cannot bookmark this page because it will time out. And so once you search this the first time, now in the future, you can just type in TESS, T-E-S-S, -S, and it'll come right up for you and you can press enter. So here's what the new trademark website looks like. And it might look more confusing and more overwhelming, but there's some ways to make it really nice and easy. So I'm gonna start with showing you how to check for something and I'll show you an example of something that is trademarked. So we're going to start with let's get shamrocked. So this is a funny saying for St. Patrick's Day that is actually trademarked. And so you want to search by word mark is the best way to search for our type of trademarks when we're talking about selling our designs on different products. Then over here we want to actually change this to expert and then we'll click the uh, search button. So here you'll see there's 27,000 results. So the first thing we want to do is actually filter these results so it's not so overwhelming. Right now we have 27,000 results to look at. The first thing we want to do to narrow this down is uncheck the dead trademarks. We don't need to see if something was trademarked but it isn't any longer. So now we've got it down to 8,000 results. So then here the next thing we want to filter down by is the class filter. So this tells you what types of items you are checking for. So I'm going to uncheck this coordinated button because it checks too many things. But if you're selling apparel, this is exactly the filters that you need. So we need class 25 because that covers clothing. The other ones that we need are class 14 for jewelry. We need class 18 for leather goods because these are coordinated trademarks. So if you apply for a trademark for something on a shirt, but it's already trademarked for jewelry, you will probably get denied. That's what the trademark lawyer that I talked to said. And so sometimes if something's trademarked on say jewelry or on purses, then it could potentially mean that you are infringing. And so you want to make sure to check for all three of these. The last one that the trademark lawyer told me to search for was number 42, because this could be the brand name for a clothing store that they wouldn't want you selling in. So now that we've filtered by those four things, now we're down to 1,712 results. So that's the first types of features that we need to sort down for. Now this one is a convenient one because the trademark for what we're looking for is right here at the top. Let's get shamrocked. And when we open into it, you can see that this one for goods and services is trademarked for 25, which is for clothing. So this is hats, jackets, pants, shirts, socks, sweaters, sweatshirts, and t-shirts. You can't use this saying on any of those items. So then it's important to know about the mark drawing code. So this one is a four standard character mark, which means that this is trademarked in any font, with any graphics, any colors. It's trademarked no matter what 
on all of those items. Now, a common misconception that I thought was true, that if you see right here a standard character mark five drawing code, then typically that means that it's only trademarked if it has a graphic and a specific font. And so you could use those words, but you just can't use them in the exact way that that brand had used them. But that's actually a misconception that I didn't know about either. When I was speaking to a trademark lawyer recently, he told me that it's actually up to the discretion of the trademark holder on if you're infringing on their trademark, if it's close to their word mark using the same words. And so now my best advice is going to be that if it is a drawing mark five and has anything to do with clothing or anything in the exact same realm, then don't use it just in case because it is up to their discretion. Now, if something is trademarked for something completely unrelated, you could potentially use it, but it's just such a gray area that he said there's really a lot of wiggle room that you can't always be completely sure. So if the mark drawing code is a four or a five, I would be concerned with those as well. And lastly, if the trademark was before 2003, then you might also see a one here with a typed drawing. That would also be something that you wouldn't be able to use in your store. Now let's look at another term. So the next one I'm going to search for is mental health matters. So pulling up these search results, what's nice is if you're already still in this system, it keeps all of your same filters. So we don't have to go redo any of that piece of it. So the first one that comes up here is actually one of the exact scenarios I was talking about with those Mark V drawing codes. So if we open this one here and we come down to see the mark information, you'll see that this is a mark drawing type three, an illustration drawing, which includes words, letters, or numbers. So this is another example where this is supposed to be just this exact design with this font, with this graphic, with these colors. But what the trademark lawyer was telling me is it's up to this trademark holder to decide if your design is actually infringing on theirs or not. So you may be safe, but they'd be within their rights to give you a cease and desist order if this is covered on the items that you're selling. So again, coming down to goods and services, this one is trademarked for pins, jewelry, jewelry for clothing, art print, stickers, coloring books, clothing, namely sweatshirts, hoodies, hats, caps, headwear, t-shirts, shorts, sweatpants. And so this person may actually come after you if you use this saying, on an item that their stuff is trademarked for. So this is where previously I would have thought we'd be okay to use this mark, but now I'm going to tell you that just in case, it's safer to stay away. Come up with your own unique saying instead, change around the words and make it your own. That way you don't have any chance of getting an infringement. So the last one I wanna show you how to search for, we'll use something really generic like the words be kind, because there's still a lot of results on this one, but you don't have the obvious one right here at the top. And so you'll see a lot of different things come up, like it's cool to be kind, be kind people, uh, be cool, be kind. You know, there's a lot of different ones that you know are gonna come up that are kind of related, but kind of not related. And so one really easy way to sort through these faster is you can actually do control F or command F, depending on what type of computer you have, and you could type in be kind. Now this is going to tell you how many matches are on this page. So this particular one has 46 matches. So what we can do is just click through this button here and look through these to see if any of these are closely related to what we are looking to sell on our item. And so this one has a lot of different types of trademarks that have be kind in it, but hopefully yours is more specific that this can help you sort through really fast. So you can see there's so many different types of trademarks, like be kind people, it's cool to be kind, be kind, smoke kind. You know, there's a lot of different ones. And so it seems like no one is able so far to trademark just the words be kind, because a lot of times the trademark people won't approve trademarks for really simple everyday sayings because you just can't approve those ones. And so you'll just need to look through all of these and then go through the next couple pages and see if there's anything that's trademarked for exactly the term that you're looking for. So let's look at one more trademark together actually to show you really how to use this. So I'm going to type in anxiety university. So again, we'll do control F or command F to get this search bar pulled up. And if this doesn't work for you, try Googling how to get the find bar on your computer to come up since yours could be different than mine. So I'm gonna put anxiety university 
city in here. And what you'll see is this page only has two matches. The first one's the search bar, and the second one is for the results. So there's nothing on this page that's an exact match for Anxiety University. So that makes it really simple. I don't even have to use these. So I could change this to 100 per page. You see this is still two of two matches. And so then we're all set to go to the next page to check for this one. Um, this one here, two of two matches. So again, we know that is the search bar and the, oh, now it's pulling up because I searched it once before, and this. So now three of three, we're good to go. Nothing else on this page. That's an exact match because it's pulling up anything with the word university in it. This page, again, we've got just these three matches. So that means there's nothing on that page. So this will save you a lot of time having to go through every single one of these. And if you have more specific questions for my trademark lawyer and you're one of the students in my POD Roadmap course, then we are having a live call with him on June January 16th, 2024, for an hour long Q&A session to go over more specifics and get your questions answered. Now, if you're watching this after it's released, the replay will be available in my course as well. And I'll link that down below if you wanna check out my course where you get more support from me. So I really hope that that tutorial was helpful in showing you how to use the new trademark system and learning some new things with me. So let's hop into eight things that you need to know about checking trademarks and selling things in your store to again, keep your account protected. So number one is how you actually get trademark infringements on Etsy. So the only way that you get trademark infringements is by the trademark owner actually coming to Etsy and reporting your listing. Etsy doesn't automatically filter for these. So one way you can protect yourself is unless a ton of people are actually searching for the exact saying that you're selling on your item, don't use it in your title or your tags because that's valuable real estate for other keywords that people are actually searching for. So this is a perfect example of if you made up the saying that's on your item, you changed a bunch of words, you did something a little bit different, no one's probably searching for that because you made up a unique saying. So use that valuable real estate for other keywords that people are actually searching for. And then this has the added benefit of if that term ever gets trademarked in the future, you have time to find out about it instead of the trademark holder just typing that term into Etsy and immediately finding your listing. The number two thing you need to know is that if something gets trademarked after you checked it and it wasn't trademarked and listed it in your store a couple months or a year down the road, you are still liable. And so it's important to, again, try and protect yourself and not use these terms in your titles or tags when possible and make sure that you're following up on your item that if you see a lot of other people start selling this and they're selling really well, maybe make it a habit to check every month to see if it's gotten trademarked. You can also use services like Everbee. They have a trademark monitor built in. Now this system checks for a lot of different words. So you do have to kind of sift through it to see what's the exact match of if your exact saying is trademarked, but they're making improvements all the time. And so this could be a really great resource for you to check on trademarks for things you've already posted to again help keep you protected and so Everbee is also just a really great research tool and so if you haven't tried them out yet I will put a link down in the description where you can get a discount on your first two months you get 50% off when you sign up for Everbee with my link so I'll link that down below that leads us to number three, is just because other people have it for sale on Etsy doesn't mean that it's safe. There's plenty of people, because Etsy doesn't automatically take things down that are trademarked or copyrighted, that sell things for even sometimes a long time in the platform and don't get caught yet. So make sure that you do your own due diligence and are always checking these trademarks and avoiding copyright. And if you don't know what copyright infringement is, I'll link a video for you down in the description of five of the things that you should really stay away from and not sell in your store. These are things like TV shows, movies, the NFL, that kind of stuff is all protected. But again, I'll link that down in the description as well. So that leads us to number four, you can't use quotes by anyone. Now you may check trademarks for these and think you're good to go. But this actually falls under copyright infringement. If someone has a quote or a picture of them or their name, that's all protected under their copyright protections. And so even if you check trademarks and it's not trademarked, that doesn't mean that you can use it. Even sometimes if someone is long dead, sometimes their estate still owns their likeness and their quotes. And so just to be safe, stay away from these in your store. Now, number five, this is a question I get a lot, and this is about single word trademarks. So let's take, for example, if the word thankful or grateful were trademarked. When it's something that's such a simple everyday 
common word, you can usually use them in a longer saying. That just means that you can't put just that word on an item. Now, if it's a more well-known word like Nike or Starbucks, then again, you can't use those in a sentence because it is really infringing on that person's brand. But if it's something really generic, like the word mom or something, you can use that typically in a sentence. So again, this is kind of a gray area, but that's the advice that I was given. Then on to number six is you can't use any celebrities or any other people's faces or names or likeness in your listings. This is all covered under copyright protection. Now, the only caveat to that is you can use public officials that are currently in office, but sometimes different quotes that they have can again be trademarked. So be really careful in checking for those as well, because it's not always safe. This can be a little bit of a gray area, but with 2024 being the largest election year in history, with over 40 countries having elections, doing political shirts or different types of items, will be a really great niche to get into. I am releasing a top niches of the year video next year, so make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that video in the future. And then two left, number seven, we have you can't use anything that looks like a logo or the font that a brand uses. You can't use, say, the Coca-Cola font or the Disney font and say different words with it and be protected. Fonts can be trademarked when it comes to being a brand's logo. So don't try and be cute and have something that looks like a logo but isn't, like Mountain Dew or Marlboro or Budweiser. You see a lot of people sell stuff like this online, but it's not actually safe. I saw a lot of people last year get trademark infringements for making Santa Claus shirts where it looked like the White Claw logo. This is not allowed. If it looks too much like someone's logo, like the NFL or anyone like that, you can get an infringement. And last but not least, we have number eight, and I've seen this get a bunch of people infringements before in the past, and that is that military branches are also actually trademarked. So things like the Army, the Marines, the Air Force, all of those are trademarked. So you can't use those on your your designs, in your titles, or in your tags anywhere, those are completely off limits. So I'm glad that I'm warning you now so you can make sure to stay away from it. Now I have two bonuses for you of other things that you can't sell in your store that I want to save you from learning these mistakes the hard way. The first bonus is that you can't use the word onesie in any listings. That's actually a trademarked word by Gerber. So if you're selling kids clothing, you'd have to use the word bodysuit instead. The other really important thing to know about selling kids clothing on Etsy is that you are not allowed to sell kids pajamas unless you jump through a lot of really specific hoops on making sure that they are protected. And so if you use the words say family pajamas or family PJs in a listing and you have any little kid items for sale, Etsy can take down a ton of your listings all at once. This happened to me a couple of years ago before I knew, so I wanted to save you the trouble of having to find that out yourself. I know that holiday pajamas are really popular around the holidays, but if you do use the words family pajamas in a listing, make sure you're only selling matching adult shirts instead of kids clothing, because even if it's not actually pajamas that you're selling, but you use that tag in your titles or your tags, then you can get your listings taken down. So I hope that this tutorial was super helpful for you in better understanding how to use the new trademark system and how to keep your store safe in 2024. Now, if you enjoyed this, video, please take a moment to like it and subscribe and leave me a comment down below. I love hearing from all of you. I hope you have a wonderful 2024. So excited to be here on my channel, helping you grow. And again, I'll link a video here at the end of the five things that you can't sell in your store to help keep you protected against copyright pretensions as well. So make sure to watch that video next and I'll see you in the next one.